Yeah, so uh, welcome to the session. Uh, so this talk is about, uh, about Node.js on, on Windows, Node.js on Windows Azure. Uh, so I'm, I'm Raj Rajshekar, I work as a, a developer evangelist for Microsoft. Um, <clears throat> so, so I'm pretty sure there have been you know, a number of uh, Node sessions today, right? Node.js sessions today. Uh, so I don't suppose I would have to talk about what is Node and all that stuff, the, the basics. How many of you here have not heard of Node? Not heard of Node. Uh, for three of you, um, yeah, four. Uh, so, I mean, very briefly, Node.js is basically a JavaScript-based um, server-side framework, right? It's a it's an app, it's a it's a framework that allows you to use JavaScript as a programming language to create network applications, not just web applications, any kind of server-side application. Um, so this session, this talk is about how Node.js is a first-class platform on Windows. So Node.js. Traditionally uh, or historically, it has been developed on Nix platforms, right? On Linux, Unix. Uh, <clears throat> so it basically uses Chrome's uh, V8 JavaScript engine to, you know, actually actually execute uh, the, the JavaScript itself. So a, a fair amount of work was done to basically support Node as a first-class environment on on Windows as well, right? So that's what uh, we'll be looking at in this session. Uh, <clears throat> so so, you okay. uh, know, briefly, that what we look at is. We we'll look at um, you know how you can do Node.js development on Windows. What kind of tooling support? You know, what tools do you need? How do you set up? How do you get started? We'll see uh, you know how you can host Node applications on Internet Information Server (IIS). How can you create your applications host there, and how does that architecture work? And finally, we'll also uh, take a look at how Node is a supported platform for the cloud. Right? So for Windows Azure is basically Microsoft's cloud platform. How you can create uh, server-side applications, web applications, which you know, which can scale to you know, uh, however your your traffic, you know, your <coughs> load profile is. So basically, the Windows Azure is a cloud platform for uh, from Microsoft, and now Node.js is a first-class supported uh, server-side application development framework for Node as well, which means you can create Node applications and deploy them on the cloud on Azure. So with that, uh, let's uh, let's get started. Uh, you know what it takes to get set up on uh, on Windows, right? If you want to develop Node applications, uh, so I'll probably not spend a lot of time on uh, on decks. I'll probably just show stuff for you. Uh, <clears throat> so basically, on on Windows, there is this tool called as the Web Platform Installer, called WebPI. You can just look it up. Uh, the web platform installer is basically a, a tool that allows you to install various kinds of web development, uh, you know, uh, development tools, development software, on your machine. So you can just go get. Uh, you know, it's, it's like a package manager that you might be familiar with on other, uh, you know, Linux kind of operating systems. So it's very similar to that. Only there's a nice GUI. So you can you know, load the web platform web API installer. You know, it lists all packages. You can select what you want. It automatically figures out, you know, what are the dependencies are needed for installing that package. And then it installs that, right? <coughs> and subsequently, when there are updates, you can install your updates as well through WebPI. So Node.js is available for Windows as an item. It's basically distributed through WebPI, through Web Platform Installer. Uh, so that's one way you can get it. So let me quickly show you what the Web Platform Installer looks like. So as soon as you install it, uh, you'll see something like this. Hopefully, I'm connected. Yep. So this loads the you know the package list a lot on the internet, uh, but the idea is you can just you know search for Node and the Node packages are listed. You select uh, you know that that particular package and you hit install. I mean it's a very painless uh, process. So as soon as you search, you know it shows you that Node.js is available. You go ahead and obviously I've installed it already. Uh, so you hit add and then install and it installs right. So as straightforward as it can get. Uh, and the, <coughs> So, so that's all there is. So once you once you install Node, then you know it, it it's pretty much available on your on your machine. So you know you can go ahead hit Node, uh, and that's it, right? So Node is running there for you. So five plus one, okay, probably <laughs> not a good idea. So that's your that's your repel, right? All right. Um, so that's how you get Node. So uh, when you when you install Node using WebPI, you obviously get Node. You get npm, the Node package manager, um, and you also get support for Node in IIS. That's called as IIS Node, which is basically a module in IIS that enables you to host your your uh, web applications or your Node applications in IIS. 
Um, so let's let's take a look at that. So what all can you do with Node on Windows, right? So so let's uh, let's go ahead and create a create a create a very simple hello world app in, in on Windows, right? So I'll just go here uh, JS or JS. So I'll just create a hello world app or maybe hello world app, right? So what I'll do is I'll create a, a file here. So I'll say sublime uh, app.js. Probably have to say start sublime app.js. So folks who have done node development probably you know this will look very very familiar. So I'm including the uh, the uh, the HTTP module, and then I say create server, and I pass my callback function which takes a request and a response, <coughs> right? All standard node stuff. Uh, Probably I'll put that into a so variable here. Probably I'll say a response dot write head return a hit 200 status code. I'll say content type is text slash HTML. I'll probably you know put my message here. So I'll say h1 hello node or something. So that's my markup. I'll probably end that. Uh, this thing, then I'll say server dot listen uh, one two three four local host, and I'll probably print a message to the console. So server listening on local host colon one two three four. Okay. So that's it. So we built a very simple uh, node app. So I'll say node app dot js. So that's it, right? It's as as straightforward as you would do in in, in Linux or or anywhere else. So now I can just go and say HTTP colon slash slash localhost one two three four, and hopefully you should see hello node, right? So that's about it. So uh, you know this might this might seem like a you know not not a big deal, but the fact is the entire code has been ported to to Windows, and it's uh, it's basically taking advantage of all the native Windows capabilities, right? So the I/O completion uh, mechanics. How it works in Linux is not the same in Windows, so it's it's a, it's actually a complete you know the the pieces which bind to the operating system have been ported completely to Windows. So, uh, so in fact, it's obviously it's all open source. You can go and take a look at it. <coughs> um, so that's the first thing I wanted to show you. Uh, okay, so that's that's Hello World. You know, maybe a slightly uh, non-trivial example here. So I have a, a somewhat cheesy looking game here that I put together some time back. Let me just run it and show you what it does. Uh, so this is a this is a Node app which uses Socket IO. So it uses Socket IO to. How many of you have heard of Socket IO? Uh, about four of you. Uh, so Socket IO is basically a framework that has been built on top of Node, which allows you to do real time communication with Node. Right. So what do what do I mean by real time communication? So typically uh, on web applications, right? It's a HTTP based request response model. So if you want to send a message to the server, you make a request, server processes it, sends a response back, close the connection. So this is how it typically works, right? Even when you visit a web page, the browser is basically sending a barrage of you know requests. The server keeps responding to all of them, and that's how you navigate to a page, right? So all the requests for your HTML, for your JS, for your CSS, for your markup, all of that goes and comes back. So that's what it's, that's how HTTP works. It's not a persistent connection, right? You request, respond, close the connection. Uh, but what? But there are scenarios, application scenarios, where we want the connection to be persistent. We want to open a connection to the server, and uh, and we want the connection to stay alive for the lifetime of the app, right? And you want to be able to send messages, receive messages. For example, you know, the canonical example for real-time mm -hmm. communication is probably a chat app, right? So you have a chat application. There are different people logged on to the chat server. As soon as you send a message, we want that message to be visible on all other clients as well, right? So here, on HTTP, you can use HTTP to implement this. But that would essentially be a kind of a hack, right? So you would. Um, so how would, for instance, uh, a particular chat client be notified of it when a new message has arrived from another user? How would you be notified of it? It's with just HTTP, you would have to resort to hacks. You would have to uh, maybe you have to continuously poll the server, right? You have to keep asking the server, "Do I have a new message? Do I have a new message?" The server will return a message if it has one. There is no message, then the server says, "No, no message," and then it goes back. The polling cycle, right? It keeps on polling, and there are other hacks as well. In fact, the the talk that happened through this in the other room was about real-time communications on the web, and you know uh, different options were considered. So there was something called as Comet, 
uh, which is again a technique for uh, simulating persistent long, uh, you know, persistent connections using just HTTP. There's another technique called as long polling. There is a uh, you can use hidden iframes, which never. I mean, there are like many hacks, right? That uh, that simulate real-time communications, but they are all you know that's what they are. They are all hacks. So WebSockets is a is a new HTML5 spec, which allows you to do real-time communication with you know with native support in the browser. So if the browser supports WebSocket, you can do you know it's pretty much a native TCP socket. So you can open a native TCP socket to a server, and then you can uh, and that connection is going to stay alive, and you can communicate with on that socket. Socket.io is a is a uh, is a Node.js uh, uh, you know framework which has been built on top of Node.js, where basically the idea is you can do this real-time communication uh, in your web applications. Uh, the the real value add that Socket.io brings to the table is uh, it it has support for legacy browsers as well, right? So so for example, if you're using a modern browser which has support for WebSocket, then Socket.io would automatically use that, right? Because that's the most high-performance uh, native you know. Uh, real-time communication technology that you can use. Um, on the other hand, if you're using an older browser which does not have support for WebSockets, then it would basically downgrade to using one of these other techniques that I was talking about. Right? It might use polling or it might use you know, even Flash or Silverlight uh, or whatever is available. Right? It will basically figure out what is the best technology available and it will use that. And that's what Socket.io does. It's a very popular framework in Node.js uh, uh, you know, in the community. So this, this app is basically a, a game which was built uh, as you will see, a kind of cheesy looking game. Uh, it's running on port 3000. So I'd say local host. Um, all right. So uh, the idea is, I don't know, player one, something. Um, I'll just put that there. I'll open another window and player two. So the idea is, uh, you know, I can, I can just move this thing here, and uh, you can see that, you know, when I move this thing over in, in one window, it, it moves another window also. Uh, so that's real time communication for you. So all this talk was to move this little ball around. <laughs> so you know, but but the point of this demo is that uh, this whole app is running on Node.js and Socket.io. And the communication, like when, when these little cannons are, little tanks are moving around their positions and the positions of the bullets, so all of that is being communicated in real time uh, through web sockets. In this case, I'm using IE10, which has support for web sockets, uh, and you can see there's a lot of logging happening in the in the background. <clears throat> but the interesting thing is, I built this app uh, a long time back, probably some two, three, probably more than that, probably four, five months back. And at that time, Node.js was not supported on Windows. So I wrote this app completely on Ubuntu Linux, and I had built it along with the colleague of mine, and, uh, and that's it. So uh, yesterday, while I was preparing for this session, I was wondering, you know, it would be nice if I can show the demo of that app, but I wasn't sure that it will work at all. Uh, but I just thought I'll give it a shot. So, I, uh, so basically what I did is, in fact, I can show you what I did. Um, let me just create a MKDIR 300 V2, something, right? Um, so I just went here and I said npm install socket.io. Is it socket.io? Maybe. Let's try. Yeah. So that's it. So you know npm is the node package manager tool that used to install stuff. So that is available for Windows as well. Then I installed, I think it uses Express.js as well. So I said npm install Express. And uh, it went ahead and downloaded and installed Express.js. Uh, so you can see that you know the node modules are there, Express, Socket IO, everything has been installed. And then I simply copied the source code that I had, my uh, scripts and app.js, and put that here, and that's it. So I said app.js, uh, and we are in action, right? So that that works perfectly fine. So that's all I did. Uh, so that tells you the fidelity of the porting, right? It works. Exactly. I mean, you don't have to make one change to source code to make it work on Windows, which is, of course, the goal. Um, so, so that is the second thing I wanted to show you. Slightly non-trivial example. Um, all right. In fact, uh, in fact, let me show you how you can do Express.js as well. So, let me create a mkdir he cdhe. Maybe I'll create sublime um, start sublime app.js. Maybe here I'll say require. Uh, oops. 
uh, express equals required of express um, what is the syntax express dot create server uh, function of request comma response here I'll probably say response dot send hello express js right and uh, I'll probably say express dot listen of one two three four so slightly easier uh, uh, syntax obviously I don't have express js here so I'll say npm install express and uh, it got installed so let's try so I'll say node app.js and through the network uh, I think it's start right no or precisely scenarios like this I have a All these syntaxes and uh, and uh, I need to save our server equals express dot create server and I say server dot get are we good yes listen after all not having much luck Sorry? Listen, listen. I'm not typing listen, is it? No, I have to say server. There you go. So, localhost 1234, and it says hello express.js. Right? So, so here obviously I've used uh, express.js to very bare bones web application, but obviously you can use the full express.js framework to set up your routes, uh, set up your static folders, your views, you know, you can use Jade whatever you're used to using. So all of that is first class support is available in uh, in Windows. So this is just plain development, right? Uh, <clears throat> that is how, how you can use Node to develop your applications on Windows, right? You can use any edit, your favorite editor, go ahead and do it. Next thing I want to talk, to talk about is how you can host your Node application. So in this case, I was hosting Node directly, like I was running Node.exe, passing app.js and it worked. Uh, <clears throat> you can Host your Node applications in IIS, right? So IIS is a full-fledged, uh, you know, production industrial strength web server, right? And it comes with a, a whole bunch of features and capabilities. So what if you want to use the power of IIS and still develop your web applications with Node? Right? So that that's where you can use uh, use IIS Node. So IIS Node is basically a module. Uh, so IIS supports this extension mechanism called as a module, right? So you can extend the web server itself by creating modules which provide additional functionalities. Basically, uh, if you are familiar with ASP.NET HTTP handlers, it's very similar to that. Uh, <coughs> so you can create a, so basically IS node is a module that has been created uh, uh, for IS, which basically brokers connections between your clients and your node applications. And it does something more than, uh, you know, just launch node. It actually, uh, as, as you can see in this uh, diagram here, so you have, uh, you have IS, right? Forget about this web role, worker role business. Uh, just focus on this IIS box. So you have IIS, and IIS basically has a native module called as IIS, uh, IIS Node, which manages a set of Node processes. So you would create your Node application, host it inside, uh, and, and would deploy it inside IIS, and IIS will take care of launching the Node uh, processes to actually run your app. And the interesting thing here is, it can launch more than one Node processes and it can basically load balance your requests across those node uh, across those node process. So let's say, you know, a node, this particular process is busy handling one particular request and you receive another request, it can basically hand it off to another process in parallel. So, you know, your requests get uh, suitably load balanced across multiple node instances. Uh, <coughs> so, maybe we can take a look at, you know, what that, what that looks like. Um, so basically here, let me just open INET NGR, which is basically the console that you use to manage uh, IIS. Uh, I've basically installed a set of samples here. So maybe first I'll show you uh, a simple node app that I put together here. Uh, Server.js, again, is it's the basic, uh, you know, hello world example that you see on node.js.org. 
there's only one difference and that's process dot uh, the, the listen listening port here right i say server dot listen and i give process dot env dot port i don't explicitly specify a port and what is the reason for that you saw in the diagram that you have ias inside that there's a module called ias node which basically manages the incoming traffic to multiple node instances right uh, so what port do you listen on so if i write 1234 i have three instances launching on uh, the same app basically you will have a conflict right you can't have multiple tcp sockets being opened on the same port the operating system is going to complain so here basically what happens is with ias node the communication between ias and the node processes happens through named pipes so it's a basically an inter process communication mechanism on windows called named pipes it uses that to communicate between ias node and the node exe so it's not a tcp tcp port so it doesn't use uh, you know sockets and tcp connections to communicate between node and the and ias The, obviously, the browser and the IIS would work as it always has worked. The communication between this and this is different, so that's why you have to specify this. That's the only point of difference if you want to host it inside, uh, inside IIS. Uh, there's another thing that you might want to look at, and that's the web.config file. This basically provides one entry, and that is basically it maps all requests that come in for a .js file to this particular module called IIS node. So basically, what we are saying here is we are instructing IIS. to look at all requests where which end in .js and these http verbs the star means all verbs that is get post put delete everything and we are saying hand it off to ias node that particular module so that's why that's what causes ias to actually take and run the js otherwise it will just download the js right um, <clears throat> so that's it so with these two things you are you are all set so what we can do is we can uh, go ahead and browse it uh so here you can see that uh, you know this this is basically just you know local host slash hello i is not this is basically a virtual folder that i created on ias and it's running it's running the node application right um uh, and in fact if you see the process manager and all you will notice that uh, there is a node exe running so you see that node.exe so that was launched by ias in fact let me tr try launching process explorer and show you that uh, that's what is actually happening So do you see that? Maybe I'll also. <coughs> First time. Control one. So there you can see that you know WCWP is basically the the worker process for IIS, and that has launched Node.exe, and that's where your app is actually running. The communication between these two is happening through named pipes. So, so that's how applications are. You know uh, how you can run applications inside uh, inside IIS. Uh, there is a if you go to the IIS node, you know implementation. In fact, the IIS node implementation itself is open source. So you can go to GitHub, search for IIS node. You can look at the source code for that native module that we're talking about. You can see how it has been implemented. Uh, so here are a few samples that uh, that are available. Uh, obviously, this is this is a, there is a hello world here. Uh, now the interesting thing is with IIS node. What another another thing that you get free out of the box is support for debugging, which I think is really really cool. Um, so here I have a I have a hello world sample. So this is the code, nothing nothing new. It basically gives you some diagnostic information. Uh, but what you can also do is you can debug this in WebKit based browsers. So for example, what I can do is I can oops. so I can go ahead and uh, launch my URL like this. So the URL here is. I'm doing zoom it. Okay. All right. So I'm sorry, my zoom it is not working. But here, basically, the URL is localhost node hello world. That's my hello world slash hello dot js. That's my URL for the app. I can simply say slash debug, and in WebKit based browsers, you will see the debugger actually launching. So what I can do is I can go and hit set a breakpoint here. and then you know navigate this from another tab or another browser even so for example i'll open this in ie <coughs> and you can see that uh, you know the the thing has been hit so you know i can inspect the objects here it's basically a full debugger here right i can do that i can step through i can say f8 uh, f8 doesn't step through it continues so i can say f10 
right? I can step through each line, right? Complete debugger is available uh, when you use iOS Note, right? On on WebKit browsers, which I think is simply amazing. All right, so that's another thing that you can do with uh, with iOS Note support in Node, uh, and then there is support for logging as well. So basically, if you have any code which says console.log that is accessible. Basically, all the console.log gets routed to a file which you can access. For example, this is another. Um, so here I can I can. Uh, so that's the that's the logging sample. Now there is this another URL here that I can visit. So the URL here is uh, again it's probably not very visible there. So the URL here is uh, node slash logging slash hello dot js dot logs slash zero dot txt one dot txt and so on. So whatever console dot log is there, you can access those through that URL. And if you want to put authentication or something, you can do that on that subfolder here, right? So that the logs are not visible to the whole world. Uh, so, but the, but the idea is all that is accessible. Another interesting thing here is they are logging on the, you know, what that port is. And you can see that the port looks a little weird there, right? It says slash pipe and all that. So that's basically the name of the named pipe. So that kind of proves to you that it's not using TCP. So those are a few things that I wanted to show you on the, uh, on the IAS front. Um, Sorry? Three minutes left. There's only three minutes left? Yeah. And then questions. And then questions. Okay. All right. Um, so, I was a little confused when you said only three minutes left. <laughs> okay. So, the last piece that I want to talk about was uh, was on the on the Azure uh, support in Node. Right. So, we saw how you can develop with Node on Windows. <laughs> you can develop, debug, host on Windows. How you can uh, host on IS. Uh, and you know, IS is a fully supported uh, platform for hosting your Node apps. The last thing I want to talk about is how you can take your Node apps and deploy them on Windows Azure. How many of you here have not heard of Windows Azure uh, before this session? Uh, about, okay, not bad. Most of you have heard of it. So, so for the benefit of people who haven't, so Windows Azure is basically. Uh, so, how many of you here uh, have you heard of Amazon Web Services, AWS? Right, so this is basically Microsoft's offering, cloud offering. Right, so this uh, basically your cloud applications can be created and hosted on uh, on Azure. You can scale your applications up. That is basically you can scale horizontally your applications up depending on your load. You can scale it down, and you know all the benefits of cloud. Right, so this is Microsoft's cloud platform. Now you can put Node applications on that. <coughs> so the idea here is, you know, this is typically the the flow. So you can create your uh, hosted service. The hosted service is a term that uh, applies to Windows Azure. Uh, that basically is your application. You can create, develop, and debug your applications locally, uh, and you can, uh, you know, simulate your host, Azure hosting environment in the local emulator. Uh, so Azure brings in some, uh, uh, you know, some features, right? So like you can use your uh, storage service, Azure Storage Service, which is you can have table storage, you can have queue storage, you can have uh, blob storage. So uh, there is an npm package that is shipped for Node. So you can simply say npm install Azure, and then you basically get a bunch of JavaScript libraries which allow you to interact with Azure storage services, for example. Right? So, uh, so you can you can work with that and you can debug it locally using an emulator. So there is a dev fabric. It's called basically a, a local emulator, which you can, it's like a it's like a small version of Azure that you can run on your machine, right? And you can debug your applications on that. Uh, you set configuration settings. So, being a cloud platform, you have to sign up on on Windows Azure. So, you go to WindowsAzure.com. You sign up for a for an account with uh, Windows Azure, and then basically your account will have something called as publish settings. It's basically an XML file which has information about who you are and you know what is the information that is needed to publish your app to the cloud. So, you get that imported to your machine, and then you deploy it. So, let's uh, let's quickly see what some of that stuff looks like. Um, so when you go to Web PI, Web Platform Installer, and have add support for uh, Azure Node on your machine, one one of the things that you will get is a PowerShell command command line called as uh, the Windows PowerShell uh, SDK for Windows Azure PowerShell for Node.js. Right? This is basically a set of command line tools which you can use to create your app, Windows Azure app locally, to launch your emulator and uh, basically you know do your de development uh, on your on your machine locally and then finally publish it to the server as well. So let me quickly show you what that looks like. Um, wait, nothing, nothing called Mac. 
magnifier. I don't know if that will help. All right. So, oh, that is <laughs> that makes somewhat better. So I just go to this thing. I'll go here. I think uh, JS slash node JS. What do I have here? All right. So I'll create a directory called Hello Azure. Uh, in fact, let me not do that. The the command and tool will actually do it. So the first command that you will use to create an Azure service is something called as new. Uh, new Azure service, right? And you give a service name. So I'll say hello Azure. So basically you'll notice that uh, the current directory has changed. So we were in Node.js, so it has created a directory called hello Azure, and it has created a bunch of files there, and it has done a CD into that. So if I just say start dot, you can see what all it has created. So it has created a bunch of files here. Uh, so uh, you know this, these are basically the, the configuration files that you need to, um, you know, to package your application and deploy it to uh, to Windows Azure. So your service configuration, for example, will have information about you know what are the roles that you have in, in your in your application. How many web roles? How many worker roles? Your service definition will have information like how many instances do you need? What kind of instances? Like you know, I want three web servers running my web applications, and they need to be there are different uh, you know uh, VM sizes like extra small, small, large, and so on. So you can give all those configurations in that. And both together will be used to package an application and deploy it to Windows Azure, right? So just doing new um, new Azure service results in that particular structure being created. So now in this Azure service, I can create multiple uh, kinds of applications. So in Windows Azure, there are two kinds of what are known as roles. In fact, there are three kinds of roles: uh, web role, worker role, and VM role. So let me talk about web role and worker role. Um, so basically, uh, if you want your application to be deployed on IIS, that would typically be created as a web role. Right? Now, the, all these roles are just uh, you know uh, application level abstractions. Windows Azure itself doesn't you know, really care about all that. Right? Windows Azure is, is a really intelligent virtual machine manager. That's what ultimately it boils down to. Uh, but for us, as a web application developers, we we, can, we get to choose. Right? So whether if an application wants, has to be hosted on IIS. And you know you want to leverage all the power of the IIS, then you would typically create a web role, right? And if you uh, if you want to do your own thing, so for example, I want to run a bad job, right? That needs to run at a certain time. It needs to be scheduled or whatever the case is. Then I would typically go for a worker role, or um, you know, as in this case, I might even create a node app, right? And I want to host node, run node separately. I don't want to run node inside IIS for whatever reason. In that case, I would go ahead and create a worker role and set it up to run node.js as soon as it starts. So here let's go ahead and create a web role. So I'll say add uh, Azure node web role and I'll just run that. So it does some things and uh, if you notice here now there is a new folder created uh, called web role 1. I could have actually given a name. I could have said add Azure web role and <coughs> a name for the web role. And if you go inside that uh, web role you will notice that it has created a server.js and a couple of web config files and in bin you can see that some MSIs and, and so on are there. The node.exe is there, so this is our node application. IIS node installer is there, this will set up IIS node on IIS. Uh, we see the read disk is basically Visual C++ uh, runtime and uh, a, a batch file to set it all up. <coughs> so what is there in server.js, right? So let's go ahead and uh, let's quit magnifier for a second. Um, so let's open server.js and take a look. So again, nothing magical. So just a regular hello world. Um, it says hello IIS node. Uh, let's say on Azure something. Right. All right. So now that I've created a created a web role and I've created my app. Let's say right. I did all my coding. Now I want to deploy. Uh, now I want to run this locally. In the Azure emulator, right? So how can I do that? So what you can do is you can say start Azure emulator hyphen launch, and I hit enter. So now essentially what is happening is uh, it is setting up my uh, emulator locally. Now that dialog that you saw was basically firewall configuration for for my local machine. So we typically want to say allow. 
Um, so here you can see that the application is run and it says, now in the system tray you can see a little icon here. So that is basically uh, uh, the emulator, the process for the emulator, for managing the emulator. So you can actually go and say show uh, compute emulator UI uh, and it will show you the, so here there is, so there is Hello Azure is my service, inside that I have my web role. So I can go here and click here and it will show you the, you know, this is like a console for my, for my web role. And there is only one instance in this case, right, if I, if I had added like five instances for example, you would have seen five web role instances, all of them running my application. So this is this is how you set it up locally. So if you want to locally, you know, create your app uh, in the local emulator, this is how you can do that, right? Just as I added a, a, a web role, you can definitely go and add a worker role as well. So you know, just you can say uh, add Azure Node worker role, right? And you can give a worker role name, and then your worker role gets set up, right? And there you can go and put your JS, and that will work as well. So let me show you uh, another example here. So let me just uh, so in fact, you can say shutdown. I think uh, shutdown. <coughs> stop. Stop Azure Emulator. So if you say stop Azure Emulator, it will basically terminate, or you can go and exit from the from the listing as well. So now it has shut down both of them, uh, and then terminate that. So I have another uh, demo here, a slightly non-trivial one, which actually uses uh, the Azure storage that I was talking to you about earlier. Uh, so let me just go ahead and uh, start the emulator for that particular application. So this is basically an application which tries to simulate stop codes. So I mean, it's not obviously real. It just cooks up some numbers for some companies. Uh, so. So let's see what happened here. So both the so there are two roles here. The get codes is basically the is the is the web uh, the web worker role, um, which basically dynamically keeps inserting rows into my uh, into my table. So I'm using Azure Table Storage to actually store the data, and this is my web application. So for some reason we're not seeing the output here. having some demo issues. Um, probably not very important, but let me quickly show you the code, what that looks like. So stock code, so this is basically the uh, the code for um, you know inserting data into a table storage. So, so you can see right at the top that I've said uh, Azure equals require of Azure. So how did I get that module? I simply went and said npm, uh, uh, npm install Azure, you can do that. Uh, and then your Azure module gets added to your application. And then you can obviously require it. And that's basically an API for handling your table storage, block storage, queue storage, and so on. So here, you know, this is how you create a table service. You get a client, and then you create actually a table. Um, and then once that completes, you can go ahead and Set up your uh, set up your information. So what I've done here is I've done a set interval, and I call generate data for uh, every certain milliseconds, which is quote uh, okay every five seconds. So every five seconds I call generate data, and in generate data I go ahead and cook up some numbers for some companies and insert that into uh, into that table. So very straightforward interface, right? So create a table, add rows to it, and you're done. Likewise, on the other side of things. So on the on the web application, the show codes. If you notice here, um, index.html. Um, what I do is I basically call a server side service. So I have a <coughs> JSON service. If I go and open server.js, you will notice that uh, uh, I basically get a reference. I basically use Azure get a reference to that table, and then I create the server here. And uh, every time I get a request. What I do is I make a query to that table, Azure or table. I mean, it has its own syntax. You can go ahead and look it up. I get that table. I provide a you know uh, a certain query. Basically, I'm interested in quotes that have been generated from now, or maybe in the last uh, 10 seconds. And then 
I get the data and write it to the to the client, right? In fact, over here, I basically stringify that information and write it to the client. And on the client, I basically take it and show it on the on the UI, which for some reason did not uh, work. Uh, so, so this was basically a slightly non-trivial example where I was using some Azure storage APIs to uh, call them from my Node application. So, with that, we kind of uh, come to the end of the session. So, this is all the stuff that I was talking about. Uh, so this is the module that you can add. You can say npm install Azure and you get uh, support for uh, you know the API for interacting with Windows Azure storage. <coughs> with that, we kind of are done with the session. So if you have questions, we have about three minutes. Uh, any questions on Node, on Windows? Stunned silence. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess the, the one takeaway from the from this whole session is that Node is now a supported first class platform on Windows. It's, uh, you know, a lot of work has been done in order to get that support. When I say first class, it means you know a lot of work has gone into into ensuring performance. So you get high performance. You know, even that's what Node is all about, right? High performance, uh, event drive. So that works, you know, as it is designed to work uh, on Windows as well. Uh, as well as, or not better than, you know, any other platform. So, with that, uh, I think we are pretty much done. Thank you. Thank you.